Hello, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example, 9.5.2, comes from Chapter 9, which covers Z-Domain transformations. In this programming example, we will look at a specific type of FIR filter called a notch filter. So for a first order, LPF or HPF, the zeros on the Z-plane fall right on the real axis. If the zero is on the positive part of the real axis, it's a high-pass filter. If the zero is on the negative part of the real axis, then it's a low-pass filter. For this programming example, we'll move on to a zero location that's off the horizontal axis and into another frequency region, which will generate a notch corresponding to the frequency that is nearest to the zero, with one caveat. A system with the zero off the real axis is complex. And generally speaking, a real signal passing through it will result in a complex output. And obviously, audio signals must be real. In order to cancel the imaginary portions of this zero, another zero must be accompanied, uh, must accompany it um, at the conjugate portion, at the conjugate location, so that the output will be real. Now, this will actually always be the case for our filters. The effect of any zero, or pole for that matter, must be canceled out in the imaginary dimension by a conjugate. In the case of an odd-ordered filter, then the remaining unpaired zero or pole uh, must be on the horizontal axis, as we saw in the case of a first-order HPF or LPF. So let's start with a simple impulse response here. And we can use the z-plane function in MATLAB or Octave by passing it the impulse response of a system. Um, and the zero locations will be generated and plotted. Here we have it. Uh, this produces two zeros, one that is at pi over 3 and one that is at negative pi over 3. So pi over 3 corresponds to uh, a frequency of 7.35 kilohertz for a sample rate of 44.1. So let's plot the magnitude response of this. So we said we'll use a uh, sample rate of 44.1. This is at pi over 3. So that's the digital frequency location. We're going to generate a frequency vector from 1 up to, let's go from 0 up to the Nyquist. Uh, we're going to have a um, omega version of this, so it's just simply our f times 2 pi over fs. It's more of a, we should call this kind of a digital omega. And um, let's define the unit circle, which is just simply a radius of 1, or magnitude of 1, times e to the j omega. Now, this magnitude response that's specific to a notch filter is derived in the textbook, Digital Audio Theory. But um, what this is showing is the difference. Look at this. So z, we said, represents the entirety of the unit circle. So we're looking at the difference between the distance between the unit circle and the first 0 times, the again, the difference between the unit circle and the second zero. Notice that the only difference between the first and the second zero is their phase. So the imaginary portion is equal but opposite. So we can evaluate this entire magnitude and we can plot it against our frequency vector. And we see a notch right at 7.35 kilohertz, right where we expect it to be. Now, there's another way we could have done this as well. To plot the magnitude response, we can also compute the frequency response with freak z by passing the impulse response h, the denominator, which in this case is just 1. There is no denominator for an FIR filter, uh, the frequency resolution, and the sampling rate. It's I typically set these both to fs. So let's do that. So this is going to return a complex frequency response and a frequency vector that associates it, uh, that's associated with it. 
So we'll need to take that complex frequency response, uh, take its magnitude, convert that to dB, plot it against F, and I'm going to plot this in red dash so you can see it should line up exactly with this other one that we just plotted. There you have it. Notch right at 7.35 kilohertz. So at this frequency location, the magnitude is zero, and none of that frequency will pass through this filter. So the next video is from chapter 10 covering IIR filters. Until then, thanks for watching.